Well, it's my pleasure to be here today. See all you guys' face and you're worshiping God. And uh, I must say you guys are in love with God. You want to increase even that. We don't want to decrease. We want to increase. You know, there's some, there's more, and there's all. We want to hit the hall. You know, because God is so good. Um, I don't have any announcement, uh, Camilla. But I do have a message. You okay with that? Yeah. All right. Uh, it's nice to welcome you from Kingston. Or did you move to Trenton? <laughs> Paula and James. All right. Welcome. All right. You never know who's going to drop in this place. But God always drop in. And he comes and visits his children. Today I picked a topic that uh, is very, very uh, real to me. Um, and the topic is miracle. Do you need a miracle? Because uh, without, we're just... Without miracles, sometimes there's nothing. There's nothing the 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 uh, the prime minister can do for our country. There's nothing that the doctor sometimes can't do. And there's just you get to the place where if God doesn't do it, it doesn't get done. And we got to get to that place because that's a place of hunger. When you look at it and there's no no answer. So we can look at the scripture today and, and look at and, and let's dig into it. You want a miracle? Nobody wants one. Yes. You want one. Yes. Sometimes it comes to a price. You've got to do something. And uh, we're going to be looking at that. So the, the to- topic of my message is the art of processing. The heart of processing. Because you might meditate in the word and that's good. But unless you process the word, nothing is going to happen. Okay? And we're all good at meditation. I mean, I mean, you know, we meditate on the word of God and all that stuff. But we're going to look at processing the word. Because if we process it, we can get our miracle. I'll say that again. If we process the word, we can get our miracle. I know that seems to be easy. Nothing is easy. But you have to put one, you have to put two, you have to put three. This is awesome. Um, I do have some note. I might just go by some of it. Maybe not all of it, but... Um, I did say that. I'll say it again just for the... How many believe there's one for you with your name on it? Amen. See, I, I learned as I grew up in my faith, many people, uh, people that went to heaven. And they said there's a room there and there's a spare part. And when there's a spare part there, somehow you can get those spare parts from heaven to hurt. Now, Jesus in this prayer said, let it be done in heaven as it is on earth. Or did he say, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven? Yes. Which one? The first one. So heaven, we are looking at heaven. So something is done on earth. And you know, if that means you need a miracle, you need a miracle. And you know what? I think sometimes we give up too soon. I do sometime. I know you do sometime. But I'm teaching you today, don't give up. Amen. There is one there. Amen. And there's a few ways of getting it. I'm going to be talking about that. And before that, I just want to pray for Pastor Travis again. Father, I want you to bless his Spanish today, Lord. <laughs> I know he doesn't know much, right? And Father, whatever he does over there, that Lord, they, they will be excited. Well, they are excited over there. Okay. 
And Father, I just pray, Father, that uh, there just be a revival in this meeting today. The same way as there be a revival in this meeting today, Lord. So we just want to thank you. That it's not because of us, because it's of you. Everybody look up. It's because of him. All right? Nothing of what I'm doing. I'm doing or he's doing. It's him. So there's a miracle for there for you. Now, I, I because I'm illiterate, I haven't got all the English schooling yet. Definition of miracle, I always look in the dictionary for definition. You know what it means? It says, surprising event. Surprising event. That sounds good. That's not even scriptural, but that's, that's what it says. Unexplainable. You can't explain it. Something that happened, you cannot explain it by any natural law. I mean, people can, well, so you go to the doctor and you're totally healed. I don't know. You had cancer? This? It's not there. It's gone. You can't explain it by natural law. That's our God. He like, You know, I want to say something. God wants to bless you more than you think. And you know, when you think about blessing, it's not always money or whatever. He wants to make an impact in your life. So miracle is a way to do it. Uh, I don't know sometimes it's a healing, miracle, signs and wonder, whatever. It's unexplainable. It's unexplainable uh, by nature, by law. And it says it's caused by divine power. Dictionary said it's called by, the, it's come by divin, 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 divine, divine power. Not by any other power. Divine mind means God. Okay? Come from the word Dios. I know, in Spanish. Dieu in French. So see, we're, we're closer than English, right? No, divine is not bad. So it comes from divine power. So you probably know that, right? Uh, <clears throat> the recipe for a miracle is always faith. The recipe for a miracle always has to have faith in it. Okay? You bake a cake, most of the time you put flour in it, right? Flour goes in, flowers goes in, right? Or whatever. So the recipe for a miracle is always faith. And so we're going to be looking at it. There's three ways you can get a miracle. Everybody says three ways. Everybody show me three. Three ways. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to explain a little bit. And I'm going to be talking about uh, the three ways. Now I talked about faith a little bit. You need faith. And a lot of people say, well, I don't have that much faith, Pastor. Well, you know Jesus says you don't need a little, a little bit, right? Tell your neighbor you've got a little bit. Come on, tell your neighbor you've got a little bit. That's all you got is a little bit. So, so that's enough. That is enough for miracle. A little bit. And I want to show you three ways. The first ways, okay, is through someone's faith. Or it's a gift. You know, you, you worship God and uh, maybe just a gift that comes from heaven and touches you. Totally heal or whatever happened. That's a gift. Or maybe I am here today and I just pray for you. You don't even expect it. And you, you get it. Whatever. You didn't even ask for a miracle. Someone's faith was there. Now we looked in, uh, I got a scripture to show you here, at Jesus at the pool. He comes in at the pool, and when he's at the pool, he says to one, he said, would you like to be made whole? Well, the guy doesn't know who he is. He said, yeah, I would, but you know, I can't get in the pool, whatever, right? And Jesus he says to him, he said, be made whole whole. That's a gift. He didn't ask for it. That wasn't his faith. That was Jesus' faith at work. God is working. 
divine power that comes from above. If God is not in the house, I don't want to be in the house. And you know what? We want to seek God to the place where we know where he is and we go there. There's got to be a place in Trenton if somebody needs a miracle that they can go. I know sometimes we talked about behavior and character and those things are all good. But today we're talking about miracle. This is really good. Because I need one. You need one. And I know there's one up there with my name on it. Just got to bring it here. So someone's faith, Jesus said, behold. And you can, we can give you scripture after scripture in the word of God where people got a gift from God. And maybe some of you could testify this time. Yeah, I, I wasn't asking. You know, God touches life. Now, about three months ago, I was cutting the grass. August? Oh, I've gone by pretty quick. I had to cut the grass. For the last two years, I've been listening to Miracle Service. And you know, uh, Miracle Service and seeing people being healed and this happened. And, you know, so I'm just, my wife said, shut the TV off. Well, I said to, to her, I, I, I like him. I, I mean, I see God moving and the miracles and the deliverance. And I mean, it's not fake. This is true. Eyes open. And, you know, so I got up and I was painting my basement. And I got up at 8.30 and I put the TV on until 11.30. I'm listening to miracle service. People being healed here and beeping and painting, you know, and uh, it's exciting. And once in a while I glance at the TV, I see somebody excited. This is great. Miracles are good. Miracles are good. Whether they come to Johnny or they, whether they come to Susie, we all rejoice. So I said to my grandson, Noah was with me. He would spend the day with us. He said, let's go and get some gas for the land war. Now for three hours I'm listening to miracle service. I cut my miracle service time, and I go to the gas station. Get out of the car, get the can out, and there's, there was two girls selling Canadian Tire card. Canadian Tire card. You know, you want to, they all do that, right? So they come to me, and one girl has her throat like this holding, and she can't hardly talk. I said, and the other girl said, she can't say, you know, so her voice is gone. She said, she got up like that, nothing. I mean, I didn't even think. And I said to her, I said, ah, you need healing. Close your eyes. And she closed her eyes. She was obedient. <laughs> and I said, in the name of Jesus, you be healed. Now, remember, when you soak in the vinegar, you become pickle. <laughs> and I was pickling with the power of God and I was I was just full of it I didn't even think uh, and, and then I said open your eyes but before she opened her eyes Ron can you give me some water please thanks before she opened her eyes I saw her face like a big glow and she grabbed her throat and she looked at me she said you're a magician a magician. Yes, that's what I was, a magician. It's magic. And she was yelling pretty loud. She said, it's all gone. It's all. And then the girl beside her, she said, I go to church all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but they were both uh, Hindu girl. Uh, so I got one. Sorry about that. You, you can drink that one. All right. Thank you. Anyway, just to tell you that it wasn't her faith. She didn't know nothing about anything. It was because I was full of what I've seen. And you know what? If you, if you, if you get full of unbelief, whatever you get full of, it's got to come out somewhere. And you know, my grandson was beside me. And he said, Grandpa, 
Do you do that all the time? <laughs> I said I don't do it often enough. But it's just to show you. It, it, it's just bypass me. The gift came through me, but it bypassed because I was so full of it. So that's one way. The first way is the gift. And, and you know, we, we all want the gift to, oh, just, God, just pour it on me. But sometimes it's just not happen like that. Now, number two, okay. Um, how many believe in um, White Sunday? Well, we had back Black Friday, right? <laughs> so today is Miracle Day, so that is White Sunday. Yeah, we got to it's so funny how we are uh, we're comp- we're compute things, right? And so the number two, number two is by your faith and by someone's faith. Okay, so that that is uh, that happens. Your little bit of faith and somebody a little bit of faith connecting together. That's why I, it happened when you come sometime for prayer here. And I can give you a scripture in Acts 14, verse 8. Um, Peter was preaching, and he saw somebody. Um, I don't have the scripture, but this is the reference. He saw somebody that had faith to be healed and walk. His faith, their faith, connection, connection, and what happened? They, he got up and walked. And you know that changed everything. One miracle can change a thousand life. One miracle can change your whole family. Can change your whole life. One miracle. So that's what happened to Peter and this guy. Touching. Now I'm using my example here. One day I was praying for faith here. She's not here today, but she don't mind. And you know... uh, when they asked me to come and pray, when I come to pray, I say, Lord, you know, help me. I'm a little spurt. I'm not an expert. I'm a little spurt. And I said, I don't want to say more than I have, because sometimes we say too much when we pray. We say too much. And God is waiting that you're done praying. And you know, you remember, you know, and he's waiting, and uh, you would like to say, shut up! <laughs> Let me do something. So sometimes you just got to have your faith. And she came because she had some issue. And God hit her, and she was on the floor. No catcher. It's a good thing, no catcher or whatever. And she fell right here, right there. And God showed her what, she, what was happening in her life. And, you know... Her father came about two weeks after, and he said, you gave me my daughter back. It's a miracle. I didn't do nothing. The name of Jesus is pretty powerful. You know, so that little bit of faith that you have, mixed with my little bit of faith, can give you a miracle. And you know what? You have a little bit of faith, You can give someone else a miracle. All we have to do is just, hey God, you can do it. You split the sea. You did this. Everything, you can do it. So, uh, the third way. You ready for the third way? This is a heavy one. It's true faith alone. Okay? Okay. and determination through faith alone meaning you're looking at God and say God I need a miracle I need, a, I need it now and we want to look at the art of uh, processing after in a few minutes I'm getting to that and I, I don't want to take too long but I just want you to get the message here when you leave this 
I know what processing is. I'm going to do it. Okay. So um, to fade along, and uh, in order to to look at that, we're going to be looking at some scripture, Matthew, Luke, and Mark. We're not going to look at everything, but if you see it on the board here, we're going to put where it is. If you want to write them down, remember the the woman with the issue of blood. You know what she did? She got a miracle by herself. And if she did it, well, Jesus was there. Jesus is here. Jesus is in the house. And that's how we have to start thinking that God is in the place. You know, he's a breath away from you. That's where he stands. And it's in Luke 8, 43, 49... Matthew nine eighteen to twenty three and Mark five twenty four and you can see the story of this woman coming to Jesus. Some of them says a little more. I will be preaching out of Matthew, and my grandson jo- uh, Josiah. Where is he? Hmm? He was there. Okay, he's going to be reading of that one. He's in the bathroom. There he is. All right. Just in time, Josiah. All right. We're just waiting for you. All right. So, uh, Luke 8, I believe. So, Josiah, you, uh, you're you going to read. All right. He's going to read the... the Okay. Okay, so Luke, do you have it on there? Okay, Luke 43. Well, why don't you sit down here beside Grandma or your mother, whatever. I'll give you the... And uh, you read it as it goes, okay? So you sit down. Just a minute. Sit down. (laughs) (laughs) You guys stand up for the reading of the Word, okay? Now... Don't try to think about anything except understand what is happening there, the story. Just understand the story. All right, Josiah? Good. All right, public speaking. No place I'd rather be. (laughs) (laughs) Now, uh, a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all of her livelihood on physicians could not be healed by any. Came from behind... Is that... All right. She uh, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes of th- the multitudes throng and press you and uh, the mas- the multitudes throng and press you. And you say, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out of me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and, f- and uh, falling down before him. She declared to him, in the presence of all the people, the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. All right. Let's give him a hand. That's good. Thank you, Josiah. Yes. Now, if you want to go to um, Matthew chapter 9, um, and I'm going to read it from Matthew chapter 9. How many got the Bible here? Let me see your hand. Okay, good. I know we have electronic Bible, okay? And I'm not against electronic Bible. But, you know, when you have a core... A paper Bible, you can write in it, you can take it, and all that stuff. It's good, you know. Like somebody mentioned, I think it was Kathy mentioned it like, yes, last week. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so you got Matthew 9, verse 18. The same story by a different disciple. <coughs> While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came. Now that's just the beginning of the story. 
saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her and she will live. Can you see that? Miracle. I mean, the girl, by the time he gets there, she's dead. Somebody needed a miracle. Next verse. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciple. And suddenly, say that with me, suddenly. What? Suddenly. I, I want to tell you some, that suddenly because God is really quick. Sometimes we linger and we linger and we linger. God is quick. Everything I saw God do is quick. Unless he's working on me. I take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but I meet for a miracle. He's really quick. So, and suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years, that's a long time. We know the story. You all heard that story. She came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Now, she'd been sick. They call it a certain woman, right? Came to Jesus. I mean, she, she was been sick for 12 years. And she came from behind to touch the hem of his garment. Now, I preached on that before. Now, the Jewish man, even to this day, businessman, they have a jacket. And on their pants, they are, they has a tassel, right? There's four tassels around them. And uh, Jewish people wear that. Today, they have a jacket over it. You don't see it. Uh, but in these days, they had the tassel on their robe, on the four corner of their robe. It's in Deuteronomy, and it's in a uh, uh, um, number you can see there. And in, in that tassel, that tassel represented that they were children of God. That they had a covenant with God. And then in the middle of it, there was a blue string. And that blue string reminded them that their God was the healer. They had a covenant. With, they were children of God. They had a covenant. And somehow, the covenant was tied up to this. And we see at a different place also. I'll show you after. So she is a daughter of Abraham. Because Jesus after that says daughter. Your faith has healed. Not daughter of God. Daughter of Abraham. Your faith, faith has healed you. So she came because she was a girl that had spent everything she had. No more solution. That she needed a miracle. Was there one in heaven for her? Yes. Was there one in heaven? Yes. Did she not had to talk to Jesus? No, she was desperate because she could not be in a crowd of people because she was bleeding. And that's a no-no. You can be stoned for that. So she's taking her life, going for the goal because she has no more solution. Doctor, no good for that case anyway. So she touched the hem of his garment. Next verse. For she said to herself. Now I got him to underline this. Make it a little bit different. She said to herself. If I may touch his garment. I shall be made whole. And that was what she just and that's processing things, okay? We're talking about it. We all know Psalm 103, which says, you know, bless the Lord and all that is without me, within me, you know. He forgives all my sin and he heals all my disease. And this is true. But once we start processing the word of God, then it becomes real. So she said to herself, if only I can touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Okay, second verse. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of a good cheer. Daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. Isn't that great? What did you say? Well, she stole a miracle. Uh, do you have another verse or is that the last verse? No, okay. But in the other gospel it says, Daughter, your faith has made you whole. In other words, I'm glad. 
you touch me because you got your miracle. You're a blessed woman. You are blessed because your faith has touched me. And you know what? I mean, uh, okay, you say, well, I want to see Jesus. I'll chase him and touch the tassel of his garment. Well, he's not wearing a robe now. It's a different time, different season, but the principle remains the same. Isn't that right? All right. So let's talk about uh, meditation and processing. All right. I'm going to ask my wife to help me. How's that? Uh, I'll say it again. I'm going to ask my wife. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. right. She's even got a note on me. She said, what are you doing? I said, okay. All right. I'll, she, go ahead. Okay. So he's talking about processing. And just recently, it really became real to me. You know, like we've always learned to meditate in the Word, right? And Joshua, he said, meditate in the Word that you may be prosperous and succeed. And, and meditating was like we were taught that, you know, it's like a cow chewing its cud, and you just go over it and over it and over it. But I've learned recently that medita- uh, processing is meditating, but it's, it's deeper. It's deeper than meditating. So processing is and we all do it every one of every person in this room automatically processes things you know um like for instance uh you know sometimes you you get sick and and you know or something and your brain starts thinking and you start processing and sometimes you think oh i'm really sick maybe uh this will happen maybe then you start seeing yourself in the hospital and then you see this and you see so really processing is seeing it is seeing and uh you know, sometimes and people, if they someone's had like a death report or something, they see they can see the coffin and they can see people standing around. That's processing, and God wants us to turn it around and process it, and um, with the right pictures in our mind. And so, uh, um, so instead of processing these neck, as soon as we see that happening in our minds, which happens all the time, you can even, people are coming over and you start processing, oh my goodness, it's going to be so busy, and it's this and it's that. We all do it. We process. But he wants us to turn it around and process it differently. Um, just for a, a quick example of it is, um, I remember years ago uh, in Toronto when we lived there he was working and I was alone with the children and we lived in a two story and it was in a, a townhouse where there was a lot of traffic and people and, and I'm I'm in bed and I'm trying to go to sleep and I'm thinking I hear you hear noises when nobody's there, right? Anybody hear a noise? Anyway, so I started thinking, what if somebody breaks in? And then they're coming up and the kids are over there and you're processing all this, right? And then I thought, wait a minute, I'm not processing right. And it's kind of like home alone. I started thinking, okay. <laughs> somebody came in I had a tape recorder then, and I thought, I'll just blare it real loud, and we'll all scream, and they'll be so scared they'll leave, you know. (laughs) And uh, so we process things, but God wants us to process, and um, I think you have a story of it, right? Or do do you want me to tell a story? I don't remember. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. All right. There was a minister, and he 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 was on a bus, and he was going to Israel, to Jerusalem, with a, with a whole team of people, eh? And he always prayed for miracles for people. And this guy comes up to him and he says, um, hey, he had a cane and stuff, and he says, I want you to pray for me. And he said, oh, yeah? He said, but, uh, he said, uh, how many people have prayed for you? Oh, and he said, all these big ministers, you know, that he knew. And he said, well, he says, you know, what makes you think you'll get your miracle if I pray for you? If the big guys prayed for you, I mean... Why would you think that you'd get your miracle with me? And he said, well, I don't know, but I want you to pray. And he said, well, I don't want to be one of the ones who prayed and you didn't get the miracle. So he said, I want you to go on the trip, go home every night after the we sightsee, and you start processing and ask God, where do you want to heal me? And just talk to God about it and see yourself getting healed and all this stuff. So he said a few days later, he came back to me and he said, I've got it. He said, what? He said, I'm going to be healed when we get to Armageddon. He said, Armageddon? Why? (laughs) Oh, well, he said, okay. So the trip goes on. So finally they get to Armageddon, which is the end of the trip. And he comes down and he says, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm in Armageddon. I'm going to get healed. So he said, you know what? Now his faith was set on Armageddon. 
He had seen from God, heard from God. That's where he's going to get healed. He had processed it. And he said, I didn't even have to touch him hardly. He said, he flew against the bus and he was radically healed. So processing is seeing ourselves healed. Seeing ourselves with the miracle God has for us. And really processing it and saying, God, okay, I see how you're going to do it. When I get up there, so-and-so is going to do this. Or when I go to the store, somebody's going to touch me and I'm going to get healed. Actually, I think it was Sharon. I don't know if it was you, Sharon, but somebody, Sharon Goatee. Or no, I think it was Joan Jones. Who's Joan Jones? She's not here today. Anyway, she told me one time that she had fallen and hurt herself. And then she started thinking, well, I'm healed and all this stuff. And then she said the next day, she, I don't know if she thought this, but the next day she fell again and was healed. <laughs> so she thought she got hurt when she fell. But this time she fell and she got healed. So we need to process how God's going to heal us and just see it in our hearts and our minds. And that's a part of meditating. And then we will see it happen. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Awesome. She says it better. We're on the same page, but she says it better than I do. Uh, processing um, means it's a series of action or step taking in order to achieve a certain end. Okay? The, the end is the miracle. And the step and action that you have to take to achieve it. And you know, some of us have been uh, looking for a miracle for a long time. But sometimes there's a key that unlocks the door. And you know, sometimes we don't see it. You know, I'm blind sometimes, and you sometimes you're blind to something, and somebody says something and uh, puts a little bit of light in your in your life, and, and so uh, so processing has to be done. If you tell your teenage kid to clean up the room, and he says, "I'll do it," the next day the room is not clean. Okay, he's thinking about it. And that's what he says to you. Well, I'm thinking about it, Mom. I'm thinking about it. And the second day, the room is still not clean. But he's saying, still, I'm thinking about it, Mom. <laughs> it's like I'm meditating on what you said. So we see action has to be taken to achieve something. And women are really good at that. You know? I mean, if I, if I tell you Joyce Meyer is going to be sleeping at your place tomorrow you'll probably be up all night cleaning the house. <laughs> because she's going to say, okay, I need some food, I need some the house in order, this. And, and she will process, you know, everything to the T when she gets there, right? The house be clean, the food be on the table, and everything. So, so we all do it in different ways. But why don't we do it for a miracle? Why don't we process the word and say, listen, when Pastor Travis comes here next week and he's all excited about Cuba, I'm going for prayer and I'm going to kneel down if I have to and I'm going to say, Pastor Travis, lay your hand on me and I will get it. <laughs> I mean, it could be something else. That's processing. Then all week you say, I can't wait till Sunday. I can't wait. Oh, my back, my back. But I can't wait till Sunday. Because I know on Sunday, what that happened. I'll be there, and I'll be square, right? I'll be, I'll get it. That's processing your miracle. Too many times, listen, there's a prayer line. Okay, anybody that's sick, come. And you know, I mean, you are sick, or there is something. And you go, and all the way, well, I hope I get it. I don't know. I would rather if Peter prays for me, he's really good. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I got to watch it, and... Uh, Maybe he's not there with the Lord today or whatever. <laughs> and we process things negatively. And it kills everything. So when we begin to process things in order, uh, things begin to happen. Um, oh yeah, you, tell, you told that story, right? You stole my story. We, we kind of steal one of the stuff all the time, right? Eh? <laughs> a new one. A new one? Okay. Um, 
The blind guy? Or the straw. Well, you guys are bypassing me. My mind is just someplace <laughs> else. Okay. Um, Kathy uh, talked about, Pastor Kathy talked about the good marriage. Okay? How many are married and you want a good marriage? All right? Okay, and, and you're thinking about that, and you know, you've read, you've read uh, Ephesians chapter 5 where she should submit to you, or she should respect me, or whatever. And, uh, and you know, she talked about, okay, we got a marriage here, we got two people, I have to do my part. You know, I have to put dishes in the dishwasher, not in the sink, Right? Amen? <laughs> now I'm processing that, right? She told me a thousand times, but I'm processing that. And I'm processing. And every time I pick up the cup, now I just don't hesitate on it. I'm processing it. Okay, it goes over there, right? And you know what? It helps the marriage. No, it helps the marriage. Or maybe something else you do, I don't know. Maybe it's something she does or, or whatever. So knowing it, knowing the scripture is good. But processing it and doing it, like the little lady, she went, she went through the crowd. I mean, she pushed her way there. I mean, determination, and I'm going to touch it. And she touched it. And when she touched it, she got a miracle. Nobody knew except Jesus. Because power went out of him. Divine power came out of the divine son. I like that. I like that. I mean, if it doesn't come from God, forget it. Because it's, he's so good, right? Um, everyone wants a good job. You know, and, and you know you want a good job. You want, how many wants to work at $14 an hour? Put your hands up. No, you want 20, 25, 30, do I get a sale here? Come on. And you want more money, but there's a processing that you have to do. Maybe you got to go to school in another year. Maybe you got to work harder, or maybe you got to work two jobs. You got to read. You, the processing things will bring the best thing in your life. And you know, whatever it is, I know you can apply something to your life about processing and that you would understand it. Uh, okay, I'm going to finish with this scripture. Well, two scripture. Those who have your Bible, can you have it at uh, Matthew chapter 9? Verse 21, okay? Can you hold it there? Now go to Matthew 18. So put a marker there so you can come back. Okay? So turn that to Luke 18. Luke 18, yes. Okay. I want to read that story because I want you to show you the processing that goes on here. You know, Matthew 18 talks about the persistent woman. Determination, right? I mean, Jesus tell the story. He could have picked a man. That's just a parable, right? The woman was despised more than a man. And he says, okay, this little despised woman had an issue. And she went to the judge. You have that? It's Matthew 18, uh, Luke 18, verse um, 3. And there was a woman in that town who kept coming to him with plead. So is she persistent? Grant me justice against my adversary, he says. And the judge. For some time, he said no. Okay? But finally, he said to himself. Look at that. Finally, he said to himself. So, the woman had an issue. She goes to the bad judge. And the bad judge says no. 
But she's persistent. You need a miracle? You go to the good judge. And you be persistent. And when you're persistent, you know, you will get justice. Meaning you will get your miracle. How many understand that? So she goes to him. And it says here, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God or regard man, next, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. The woman comes to him and she's processing what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to come to him every day. I'm going to come to him. I'm going to bother him. And he's processing that, okay, that woman is going to come to me. She's going to come to me. I'm tired of her. What am I going to do? I tell you what. I'm going to do justice. I'm going to give her what she wants. So he's processing too the, the same way. So turn, do you remember I said, so it says, go back to the other verse, uh, Brian, uh, one verse before. For he said within himself, that's when he began to process. He's processing about her coming and everything. Now go back to um, nine, uh, Matthew 9, Matthew 9, because he said within himself, for she said to herself. Now there's something about saying to yourself. Because on both cases here, she's not just talking to herself. She's meditating on, and she's, she's saying, yeah, was that there? She's saying something. Now it's, she's putting something into motion. She's going to push for Jesus. You know, the other bad judge is saying to himself, I better do something, and he does it. So, thinking about it, and processing what you're thinking about, something happened. You understand? Because sometimes we stop when we're just before the top of the hill. Another push will get us down the hill, and we can go, right? So this is what I want to say to you today. Because there's a miracle for you. With your name on it. And if we will keep on pushing through. Applying the principle that we see in the Bible. That's why we have the word. If so we can see the principle that they apply to get what they needed or what they wanted. Do you want a miracle? I mean... Some of you may not even say, listen, let me process this thing. I understand what you say. I'm going to go home. I'm going to do something. I'm going to start reading. I'm going to start getting God's plan to get my miracle. But maybe today you understand what I'm saying. And you say, Pastor Rock, if I come to you and I pray for you, you pray for me, I'll get my miracle. Because that's where you're at. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish with this. I don't want a miracle service. Because a miracle service can go on two hours, three hours. we got kids up there. Miracle service should be done basically at night when we have lots of time. Everybody can be drunk in the spirit. And we can, you know, sometime we, we spend time with people to receive and all that stuff. You can't do that now. But I can pray for four or five people, whatever, who needs a touch from God today and say, I know this is my day. Because I feel inside God is saying, this is my day today. I understand what you're saying. I connect. So therefore, when you come here, I will connect my faith with your faith. And then you will see the miracle of God in your life. You know what? I said it before. And I'll say it again. Next week. Benny Hinn comes here. Oh. Miracle service. You know. We advertise it in the window. And people come over here. Maybe that's your day. Maybe that's the day. But today is Pastor Jacques. And he's just a little spurt. He's not an expert. 
But you know what? I like the scripture that says God will use the foolishness of some to confound the wise. Meaning the smaller you are, the less effective you are. Wow, there's a tool I can use. Because uh, maybe there's no pride there. Maybe there's no uh, whatever, but there's excitement in the house. There's excitement in your life. And there's connection. Connection is very important. Ooh, all right. You ready? If you have to go, you can go. No, uh, some people have to go early. Uh, if you want a coffee, you can go for a coffee. But if you stay in this room, you connect with us. All right? You connect with me, you connect with the person that comes for prayer, and I may not even pray for them. I may just lay my hands on them. Who knows? I don't know. I want to be obedient to the Spirit of God. And so many times I'm not. Somebody comes for prayer, all right, hallelujah. No, I never even heard God, oh, what do you want me to do? Because maybe he's the one that we should ask, right? So good. Awesome. They're getting Radley upstairs. Uh, Sharon, do you want to get on the piano? We're just going to worship. Listen, stay in attitude. You're not here to watch. You're here to partake. There's a big difference. I'm not here to... I'm here to partake with whoever's going to come. And basically, if nobody comes, that's fine. I deliver my message. <laughs>